What's up, broods and broodettes? It's Doug Pico, dudes. We are coming to you today from Gray Go Figure Seattle. My name's Sam Rathert, and with me is the man who puts the beer in beard. It's Jeremy Adalgo. What's up, Pico Broods? We got a good episode for you today. Uh, we learned a lot this week, and I think uh, we're excited to share it with you. <laughs> we sure are. Let me give you a rundown of what's coming up in today's episode. Uh, we're going to give you a Pico Down update on the uh, Pico Brew, uh, my Pico Brew C that had uh, had to go in for triage. Medic! Um, we're also going to go through, uh, uh, quickly talk about our wonderful experience at Pico Brew today, including our failed interview of Mike Brennan and our upcoming interview. <laughs> yeah, it was a rather hum humbling experience all the way around. So we learned that uh, A... I don't know anything about podcasting and how to record an interview and B, how woefully inept I am with regards to my knowledge about beer and fermenting and hops and flavor profiles. And because of that, we've got some interesting folks that are going to help us uh, come up with some cool, cool learning series on our podcast here coming up. Oh, absolutely. I am so excited about what we're going to learn and what everyone who listens is going to learn from some amazingly high profile, super talented brewers. Absolutely. And then we're going to get into a review of Lucky Envelope Brewing's Beardless Brewer Red Ale. And it's been, uh, it's been brewed completely out of acceptable uh, patterns by the fully bearded Jeremy Adalgo. Oh yeah. Although I did, um, I have been bearded the entire time I brewed this. Uh, although I did trim trim a little bit last night on the beard <laughs> up top. So <clears throat> up top, huh? Up top. Well, just to be clear, the curtains match yep. the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 here's a, a, before we get into Pico Down. I got to tell you, we did go to Pico Brew today, and we got an awesome experience there. <clears throat> But we also spent about two hours getting to try all sorts of beers. Lots of beers. Some Lots of wonderful many beers. Wonderful beers. Um, and so, as uh, our listeners know, we usually do enjoy a beer or two while we podcast, and we may have enjoyed a, a few before the podcast. So, forgive us if, 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 if it runs off to everybody else. I can't even speak today. All samples, very small samples. Very, it was tiny yeah. samples. Yeah. It, was, it was awesome. Hold me um, close, a tiny sample. Oh, and we got to try out hop oils from the Pico Still for the first time. I really shouldn't be talking about that yet, huh? Mm, you should. I think you can talk about that. <clears throat> Do we want to talk about this failed experiment today before we get into Pico Down? Yeah, why don't we? So, um, again, brand new to the Pico game. I mean, the podcast game. Well, both, really. <laughs> and so... Uh, How did this work? Yeah, so uh, we, we got an opportunity to interview Mike Brennan, who's one of the major developers behind the Pico Still there at Pico Brew. And immediately realized that this whole like new podcasting setup that I, I, Sam and I got got going isn't really portable, um, not easily anyways. I've got kind nope. of a, like a Tupperware thing I can throw it all in and take it with us. But so anyways, I, I got this microphone that um, you can connect to. You can connect to your. Uh, what are you doing? You can connect to your smartphone if you remember to bring your dongle because <laughs> you've got... Is that I've, the actual thing it's called? I think it's actually called a dongle, yeah. Okay. So, so I, here, rem I remembered my dongle. You, yeah, well, mine's detachable. And I left it <laughs> I left it attached to the rest of the podcasting equipment when Oops. I came in, came in to uh, work today. And um, so that meant that... I had to try and figure out a place to go either find a dongle or <laughs> don't spit on the carpet <laughs> or uh, luckily my wife was kind enough to to let me borrow the uh, let me borrow the laptop uh, our Mac laptop so we could go record this episode oh, you but... didn't go to the dongle store <laughs> I didn't go to the dongle store they have all sizes and lengths Anyways, so um, the thing is, though, is I had never tried using this microphone on anything. I planned on using it with my phone. Went ahead and, and um, had a failed setup on the Mac. 
and then pulled oh, luckily man. sam's oh, man. phone still had a, a regular 3.5 headphone jack that i could plug it into um set up garage band for the very first time on his phone so we could re- record it and um rookies Bunch total, of rookies, total rookies. So we recorded like the first eight bars. Yeah, of we an got interview. We got four seconds of the <laughs> interview. <laughs> Enjoy your four seconds of Sam talking, <laughs> <laughs> and and proceeded to go through twenty minutes of gold with Mike Brennan. Oh man, that guy is nothing but awesome stories and information. Oh and my gosh, he, so experienced. Yeah, and and uh, hopefully he doesn't feel like we wasted his time, and and uh, we were. We were blown away by what uh, what he had to say and uh, all the information he had on the Pico Brew. So uh, we got uh, to the point um, there at the end and just were like, well, hey, I think you got to go. You got to get on a plane. We've taken up enough of your time and realized that the, the recording had stopped oh yeah after the first eight or ten seconds. And so he was gracious enough to say, hey, well, let's set something up for next week. Let's uh, let's redo this once you get your your stuff figured out so not only did he talk about redoing it which was so awesome he's like come back monday uh let's do this again um he's talked about helping us do a series Mm -hmm. of episodes on uh not only so what topics were we looking at well two really one Mm -hmm. would be an actual series on bgcp i think i'm saying that right i'm probably messing it up it was four letters i remember that so basically like tasting and sensory um Mm -hmm. uh, exercises to go through with the beer one of the things that that sam and i both noticed on our podcast is we don't do a very good job or take very much care in explaining what we're tasting i know four descriptor words yeah one of them's yummy yeah i say bright and hoppy a lot and that's what you get out of me when you get an ipa and so uh we um he started talking about all this stuff that that he he works with with uh with UC Davis and their sensory program and their brewery program and how they're talking about how it's really an underdeveloped area of of you know the brewing scene is people really understanding what they're tasting and how they're tasting so yeah. a couple of things we talked about was doing a whole series of that and he suggested that we we go through and actually brew some freestyle pico packs where we're uh, what do you call them? Like a, like a smash pack. Smash packs, yeah. So we're essentially what we're going to do to learn the flavor profiles is we'd brew a single grain and a single hop. And we'd... No, not a single hop. Oh, I thought it was a single grain and then multiple different hops. But maybe it's multiple malts. If only I knew what brewing was. Luckily, I have a machine that does it all for yeah. me. No, I, well, so, so that we could get the different flavor profiles. Yes. So, you're right. I see what you're saying. Single grain um, and a single hop At in one time. Pico yes. pack. And then the next Pico back, we'll pack. The yeah, is same same grain, different hop. So you can you yep. can pick up on the different flavors. I'm with you now. Um, so um, anyways, and and as he was going through, he was getting, I think, pretty excited about this. So we came up with kind of an off-the-cuff suggestion. Like, hey, what if we do a series on this? Yep. And, uh, he agreed that that would be a pretty good idea and even gave us this this tasting chart um, to, to we're gonna try and use it today to help explain what we <laughs> I'm gonna try yeah we'll, we'll post a picture of it on uh, on Instagram oh, perfect <clears throat> good idea yeah and then uh, he also talked about because again this guy's been brewing for over 20 years himself 22 years yep and uh, he introduced us to uh, Annie Johnson who is the oh, main brewer for Pico brew she's and, so awesome. oh my gosh legendary it was like meeting a Bruce a brew Eberty. Brew Liberty. Brew Liberty. That's a celebrity and a, a brewer all rolled up into one. Yeah, in the yes. in the in the brew uh, the brew world, the, brew, the home brewing. Brew yeah. So one thing is, she asked us. She's like, "Well, how'd you guys oh, like the gosh. Tweeties?" Oh gosh. And we were like, "It's funny you should ask." We gave it like three stars, and she goes, <clears throat> "It was meant to be, uh, what'd she call it's it? A base. A, a base beer. Yeah. So a beer that you would use as a base to do some, you know, some some." fruit additions or some experimental um different things with and that like blew me away and you know what we got to and i didn't even think of it at the time but one of the beers they threw at us out there uh they did a tweeties and it was combined with pink tranquility tea not pink peach i meant peach did i say pink 
Could have been pink. All right. This but is it was... only my more than one brew today. Yep. Um, so peach tranquility tea. Yep. But I'm telling you, great aroma, awesome taste. It was like drinking uh, almost a juice. Alcoholic juice is so good. It was it was really good. And so I think what we're going to have to do is take Annie's advice and we're going to have to review that beer after we try and use it as a base um, and get a little bit Oof. more experience. Yeah, get a little bit more experience under our belts. Um, the other thing that uh, we talked about with Mike was doing a fermentation episode Ooh. or perhaps a series. Yeah, this um, guy... Uh... I think he could talk about fermentation all day long. Fermentation and water. That's like, yeah. he says, everyone kind of deals with those last. He says, these are the two biggest effects you have on your brew. It's not necessarily the grains and the, the malts. All those, you know, have a piece. But water and fermentation. Yeah. Well, the, the Pico brew doesn't really make the beer. It makes the wort. And the yeast makes the beer. Yes. And so he talked about how important the, the temperature is and Again, there's a lot of home brewers who have a lot of experience and um, they know a lot of this stuff. But, you know, some of this is for, you know, people who ordered a Pico brew and these are the first beers that they're ever brewing. Yep. Um, and, and what can you control when yeah. you are making a brew in your Pico brew? Yeah. And and the, the biggest thing is like you can control a few things like plugging it into power. <laughs> And uh, you can some recipes adjust the the bitterness yeah. and the alcohol but by the volume. True variables would be the water you use, water, and the and how you ferment it. Yep, yep. exactly. So, um, so we look forward to being able to do that. We're gonna um, be extremely more organized when we go meet with him next week, and then um, hopefully get a couple of episodes to start kickstart those series off. Absolutely. So we're uh, really apologetic. We do not have an interview for you uh, with Mike Brennan today, but we will have one. Also known as Mike Brennan. Mike Brennan. I thought I said that. Uh, My mouth's not working right now. I heard Brenner, but that's okay. (laughs) I got Bruce Jenner and I got all this stuff in my head right now. Why do you have Bruce Jenner in your head? (laughs) Why don't you have Bruce Jenner in your head right now? Because he is now Caitlyn Jenner. All right. So let's talk about uh, what a brave soul. Let's talk about Pico Down. (laughs) Yes, I want to hear about the resurrection of your Pico. Scene. Oh, the, the the holy eagle. So it's Good Friday, so talk about nice timing for the resurrection of my Pico. Uh, yeah, these guys are absolutely amazing, and again, they have a, a large volume. We are dealing with a a new unit that many of us were Kickstarter backers on, and you can't expect perfection right out the gate with it but what you should expect is someone to stand by their product and they absolutely do absolutely yep. and even though uh, it you know there's a, a number of 24 hour sort of turnarounds to get responses back etc from the sheer volume of what they're dealing with and it's not that it's so much it's that so many people right. jumped on board with this and these guys are not a big outfit it's surprising when you walk through the office and you're like Well, that was a few steps, and there went that department. Well, and the other thing we learned today, too, was while you, when you submit something, it goes in a queue, there are not separate queues for somebody who wants to be a brewer, or somebody checking on their order status, Mm -hmm. or somebody checking on, like, their return. It's all one software system. It's all one giant queue. So just keep that in mind. Uh, They have been pretty good about getting back to people within one or two days, kind of at the most. Um, multiple inquiries again, kick you to the back. So, so the, the neat part is once you do get a hold of them and they're working through uh, getting your unit fixed, repaired, whatever might be wrong with it, um, it really is pretty rapid. We got to see the repair rooms where they work on the units. Some uh, amazing people that work within there, Kevin and Tim, and a few other people. Uh, and we, uh, I got my unit back. They actually called me about 24 hours or emailed me about 24 hours after I turned it in and said it's ready. And I couldn't go until today, almost a week later. So, right. Oh, poor Picos. I was not brewing. So I will be brewing all weekend. I got about six packs saved up and we're going to be doing a whole lot of brewing there. So, um, I'm literally looking forward to that. And, uh, this Pico, uh, Pico brew sitting in my car right now. It's all strapped in safe with the seatbelt. Cause I want to make sure it gets home safely. Yeah. And I'm going to put it through its paces. Uh, we are actually looking at seeing if we can brew in a, a vessel that is not a brew keg. So we will brew, sorry, we will brew in the brew keg, ferment, ferment. in a different vessel. Mm-hmm. So you have gone out and gotten a couple of, I don't know. Just, for, just fermenting. A couple gallon. But yeah, they're like two gallon ferment, fermenting buckets. Pretty um, cheap. Yeah. 
Uh, but they so, allow you to get more brews fermenting at once, right? Yeah. We, so the idea is you cool it down in your, your brew keg, and then as you need to aerate it prior to pitching your yeast, you can put it in the fermentation vessel. Um, one thing Mike was talking about today that would be interesting that I don't know that you have the setup for, but um, uh, pre, pre-loading the bucket with like CO2 so you don't over oh, yes. over oxygenate your beer. Although when you're trying to... Um, you are way overestimating my skills <laughs> when you're trying to get the oxygen in there I and aerate it. I can't spell CO2, yeah. let alone put it in there. <laughs> you just spelled it. You'd think it would be pretty easy, but it's not. <laughs> when you say CO2, you're literally <laughs> spelling it. Really? Yeah. I don't smell anything. Oh, man. How many oxygens in that? <laughs> All right. Uh, so... So, so Pico down. We're up, we're running, and uh, we're working on some... Uh, that the, We both... So... We both brewed <laughs> Denny Cons. <laughs> uh, what is that? Vanilla bourbon stout, imperial oh, porter, imperial vanilla Imper- yeah, bourbon Imper- yep. porter. Yep, that's it. And when I say we both brewed it, what I really mean is uh, you posted an awesome Instagram, and it was a picture of of it brewing. It says when a friend brings you a step filter preloaded with a pico pack, you don't ask any questions. You, you just brew. You just brew. Yep. So while I was pico down, Jeremy was good enough to brew one up for me also, but I'm controlling the ferment on it. Yep. And I'm going to control how I mix it with vanilla and bourbon to see what you come up with versus what I come up with. And this this is one that a lot of people, including employees at Pico Brew, really like. Is Denny Cons an amazing brewer? Does some great stuff. Yeah, and we got a little bit of insight too. So um, when you order that Pico pack, you get a card, and it basically says, "Add a vanilla bean, um, <clears throat> add uh, the bourbon to it." prior to you know like right after you rack it or uh you can put it in the in your brew keg before you rack it if you're going to put it in bottles or something anyways the the alternative to the actual vanilla bean is using um vanilla extract and he was saying yeah that's okay in a pinch but if you take the vanilla bean dip it in vodka just a quick dip to make sure it's nice and clean slid it down the middle first slid it no no first you dip it then you slid it down the middle sure it's not slit and dip I don't know. The stuff in the middle should be pretty, pretty insulated. But if you want to, if you want to double dip it, maybe you do that. <clears throat> Anyways, the idea behind that is using the vanilla bean uh, because that's where where the solids are, where the um, the flavor is going to be imparted and not destroyed during the fer- fermentation. I think that was one of the things that you found out with your Tweeties. Uh, today was you had peeled an orange. Oh, this is, and this is where I discovered how what an idiot I am. I'm like, man, I'm gonna dry fruit this sucker, and I'm gonna put some. So I did. I peeled an yeah. orange, quartered it up, just dropped the flesh in uh, near the end of the ferment, um, and let it go a, a little extra long. And I didn't get hardly anything out of it. And, and best of all, I'm talking to Annie, and she's doing her best not to. Not to absolutely um, laugh at me, yeah, but uh, it really is. It's the oils like the that were released from the zest or the peel that would have actually given me that orange aroma and a yep. little bit of the flavor. The fruit is just sugar I'm adding that gets eaten up at yep. the end of that fermentation. It gets me nothing more. Yep, all the flavors get destroyed. Yep. And, and um, no wonder I didn't notice yeah, it. Yeah, we were talking about it, and Annie like assumed a level of competence far above what we're <laughs> yeah. at, and she's like. She's like, oh, you just added the zest. That's a great idea. And Sam's like, well, no, I peeled it and added none of the skin. <laughs> uh, it's all right. We got to look. So when when we do that one, I'm going to uh, – actually, my wife was kind enough to, to get order me up a vanilla bean on Amazon Fresh so that I, I have one to put in mine. You got one van- – so what does that shipment look like? One vanilla <laughs> bean, please. <laughs> The truck pulls up outside. Giant Giant pickup truck. He's got about an eight foot box because that's all they had available. You open it up and there's a tiny little jar, like a film canister. (laughs) One vanilla bean in it. One vanilla bean. Does it go, ah, when you open it up? Golden light cascades out and showers your face. I hope that's an amazing. (laughs) So, (laughs) So, anyways, we get a. We gotta try that one out, and it should be interesting. I'm still debating on whether I rack on, that into I'm, growlers or into one of the serving kegs. I'm figuring um, out how I can order this so it'll shower my face in in golden light. 
<laughs> you go to Amazon and you search golden shower. <laughs> All right. Way too much beer today. <coughs> Don't search that. Don't. Please. So, What if you find something? <laughs> Matt, maybe let us know. Just, okay. Uh, so we will be brewing up. We got uh, our first two Pico packs from Pico Brew that they sent us to brew up and review. Yep. Um, and so they're also red, red uh, ales. We're going to do or, some red ales. So yeah. we have a red ale today. We're going to do two more red ales and kind of go back to back with those two to see what we yeah. like better. And we're going to compare it back to this too. Absolutely. I think that'll be more strictly review episode and... and um, so I think we're, are we done with the Pico down? Do we want to get into the... the... No, nobody cares. I'm the only one who really cares. My okay. heart hurt. I will edit out the entire first portion of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go from what's up, broods and brudettes, the Pico's fixed to... <laughs> the now Pico's we're... fixed. Now let's try some beer. <laughs> yeah. And, and we'll take out all the gushing we did over Mike Brennan. <clears throat> so we can't do that. Uh, so let's talk about uh, this Irish Red Ale. So uh, Lucky envelope brewing i've heard of them they are a northwest uh, brewery right also known as northwest yes they are <laughs> no, no notable no, um notable um, noise um early in 2013 these these guys so early yeah in 2013 couple of home brewers couple of home brewers ray and barry originally came up with ray a concept to barry. open a brew pub uh it was uh it would Combine Barry's passion for brewing and Ray's desire for an East Coast style sports bar. Um, they both quickly realized that a restaurant was out of their depth, so let's make just beer. Um, which perfect, I think, worked out really Thank good. You. Worked yes. out well for us. Uh, and uh, Mike again from Pico Brew also said that you know Barry's one of those guys who really has his Beep. together, and so um, did I time that right? You did. Perfect. Yeah. I think I think we got the, the fake beep in there, and, and now I don't have to edit that in post. Perfect. We just saved ourselves a lot of time and wasted the listeners an extra 30 seconds. Awesome. That's Well, you know, some people are driving, and they don't mind us killing the time, or not. Maybe maybe they we just lost 50% of our listenership, which is like two. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're down two listeners. <laughs> I hope the other two are still listening. Hey, Barry. Barry's a pretty cool guy, right? And yeah. We, we don't know him, but Mike has a super high opinion of him. I think he was in the Pico Brew offices just a few days ago. And we actually got to drink some of the stuff he left behind. So lucky us for showing up when we did. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I can't remember the name of that one, but it was an IPA that they were working on. Um, I want to say Avita. I know that's not it. Uh, don't sh- cry for me, Argentina. It's definitely not that. Anyways. We'll uh we'll do a quick Google search while we fill some space. On Absolutely. The air. You tell us more about this brewery. Where I'll, are they located? They're located down in Fremont. Um, Fremont, that's our neck of the woods. Yeah, well, that's right, not too far away from where uh, Pico Brew headquarters is, which yep. explains the uh, you know the familiarity there. So also today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the the beardless brewer red ale, and um, this one is. You know, kind of in the Chinese tradition of celebrating uh, life's moments. It's it's supposed to be an Irish style red. It's easy drinking with malty notes and toast of toasted bread and sweet caramel and cocoa powder. And um, I don't know that much about reds except for that I kind of like them. Uh, and they have that, you know, that multi flavor that I prefer in beers. And uh, this one feels like a pretty good one. Well, I can I can talk a little bit about reds, uh, but because I there's a red that I usually get every time I go to an Irish bar. But let me first talk about uh, Lucky Envelope. I did want to point out that uh, one of the first critic reviews that comes up says that Lucky Envelope is a Ballard brewery oh. with interesting fruit beers, friendly staff, and cornhole. All right. Well, and you can't have good beer without cornhole. Can't have good beer without cornhole. And the Barry is the husband of a very tolerant wife, a father to a dog, two cats, and one small human. Cool. Right on. So, uh, yeah, red. So we talk about this Irish red ale. Uh, and the Irish red ales, maybe people are like, I don't know what one of those is, but let's talk about one that's super famous and hopefully everybody has seen on a menu at some point or other, and that's uh, Smittix, right? Smittix. Smittix. Now... Smithwicks. What do most people see when they see Smithwicks? Smithwicks. Smithwicks. 
I love going to, uh, when I first started ordering beers, I'm like, man, this Smithwick's is really good. Could I please get another? Um, <laughs> That's the Irish laugh. <laughs> That was a leprechaun that just appears out of nowhere. <laughs> it's a Popeye. It's a Popeye Irish <laughs> leprechaun. <laughs> um, and so uh, Smittix, uh, you know, one of the most famous. Kilkenny makes uh, a re- Irish red ale. Um, gosh, even Sam Adams makes an Irish red ale now. But Smittix is the one that you're probably most familiar with. And uh, it is a low IBU um, and generally low uh, alcohol, low to mid alcohol levels, three three and a half to five percent. Um, usually under 30 IBUs, really in that mid-teens to mid-20s IBUs. But um, an incredibly easy drinking ale. One of the reasons I love it is I can just go down and have a couple pints and uh, pretty easy to drink, goes pretty easy with everything. Not overpowering flavors, but also not underpowered to the point where you are uh, basically drinking something with light in the name. Um, what, What do we call those? Oh, banquet beers. Banquet beers. Yeah. There you go. Um, so it's a, it's a step above there. So, there. so so let me give you some of the stats of where this one came in. Stats? We're going to read the stats? The stats. Pulled so, a triple-double last night. Yeah, this tri- triple-double. This one came in at a alcohol by volume of about 7%. Ooh, that's not bad. That's way too high. Are you? Are, did you turn it up? I did not turn this one up. Really? All right. I did not turn this one up. I think, you know... You've oh, ruined my entire theory on this beer. Are you sure you're looking at the right beer? I'm not looking at the Are right Are you looking beer. at the beer we were talking about? Nope. I will now be looking at the beer. That, okay. Uh, that sounded so too high for this. We're, we're at 5.2% that sounds alcohol about right. by That's volume. right on the top range for a red With ale. a 20, 25 IBU and uh, 12 on the SRM, whatever that is. It's got a 12 on the SRM? Totally. Jeez, I wouldn't have guessed... Uh, I think we just lost all credibility. So I'm going to look up what SRM is, and you keep talking about Irish Reds. Sure, I'll talk about Irish Reds, but first I want to give a shout-out to the ENIAC that we had. E-N-I-A-C. That was the uh, ENIAC Mosaic IPA from Lucky Envelope that we had earlier today that Barry had brought over. And that was also super good. Um, It may have contributed to our inability to record an amazing interview. Um, Hopefully we can uh, get lightning in a bottle twice there. Um, But on those red ales, you know, make sure when you're talking red ale, uh, be specific. The Irish red ale is what's typically talked about, but there are some U.S. uh, beers called red ales. And those aren't really the Irish red ale. They're usually either a, a, a dark amber or it might even be a lager with caramel coloring. But it really just refers to color that's not really done in the style of the Irish red ale. Uh, there are some that even argue Irish red ale isn't a real style. Um, sort of like an English what? bitter isn't a real style, but it's a style How to dare me. they? How dare they? They're going to lose that pot of gold. <laughs> ah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is everyone always after my beardless red? Where's me spinach? <laughs> At the pot of gold. So That's the least Irish guy you could have is... come up with. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, Actually, right. this might be even better. <laughs> I like Irish red. I stand corrected. <laughs> Sling bit blade has now entered the room. I like some Irish red. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Do you want to use that voice to read what an R- SRM is? Never Never mind. Mind. I'm like gonna... a normal person people's turn hearing this <laughs> i'm gonna do it so it's the standard reference method which refers to oh, the color system yeah. the color system used by brewers yep. to specify finished beer and malt color uh so in in the case of malt it is actually the srm color of a laboratory wort made from the malt <laughs> I'm going to stop there. I don't need to hear about a laboratory. This sounds way too technical, but SRM really refers to color is what you're getting Color of the beer. Yep. Hey, look at that. We all just learned something. What, what, you know, what this doesn't say is like, what is, what is the scale by which you measure it? Because 12 doesn't mean anything. I think think it's in SRMs. (laughs) It's in SRMs. I'm, I'm going to. Click on this link at Blue Brew Excellent. Brew Wiki. Oh, here, I think here we go. Click it. I'm gonna pour more of this nearly oh. empty keg of red ale. Nearly empty. So that'd be awesome. Um, the one to three is a pale yellow color. Three to four and a half is medium yellow. Um, four and a half to seven point five is gold. Seven point five to nine is amber. Nine to eleven is copper. Eleven to fourteen is red brown. I would say we've achieved that pretty darn we're, we're well. We're pretty much on red brown right here. Yep. Uh, right around 12, I'd say. <laughs> good, good guess. <laughs> 14 to 19 is brown, and 20 is black. 
Oh, awesome. This is the way I, uh, I assess my urine. <laughs> really? In SRMs. Yeah, see how good hydrated enough. you I are. I hope you never score above about an eight. <laughs> so uh, I just did pour another glass of this stuff. I have to say I've got about a nice inch of head on top of that. It is um, a bit creamy. Um, it is that, that consistent, not a lot of big bubbles, but very pulled together, very thick. And uh, sort of like a, a root beer float when you get one. And you got you got a couple inches there. Yeah, you know, I didn't tilt the glass properly. <laughs> you, got, so. you got at least an inch on me there, buddy. Um, so uh, we're looking at that. It's got good color. And before we try it, uh, anything we should again. know about... Again, before we, mm, before we finish it. Anything we should know about how you put this together. So what kind of water you did or how you fermented it or how you uh, 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 put little bubbles in it. <laughs> Carbonated it. Yeah, so, <laughs> so essentially... Um, I went through, I didn't touch the recipe at all when I, when I set it up in the, in the Pico, uh, I went through, you know, I hit start, uh, and then, and then I, uh, as I often do one of the, um, let me start over. One of the things that I did a little bit differently on this than I normally do is for a long time, I was just, I was buying distilled water. I was putting it in the machine and then also using that to brew. Yes. Um, I don't know where I got the idea that that was maybe not. Some Im jerk told you you could use tap water in your brew keg. Well, I knew I could use tap water in my brew keg, but we were having a little bit of a debate about, you know, does distilled water actually add much flavor to the beer? Uh, yeah, or zero flavor. Yeah, to the subtract beer. flavor to the from the beer. And what do you actually want to do? And after Sam's meeting with, uh, so this one I actually used tap water in the brew keg, okay. distilled water in the machine. Yep. Um, and then after Sam's meeting uh, with uh, Douglas, Douglas last yep. week, where he recommended that you actually put the distilled water in everything or reverse osmosis, uh, I I kind of regretted it, but. That's what I did on this one. We have pretty good water here in Washington, so um, not. I, I, I'm not too worried about it. You now. shouldn't be. It's delicious. Yeah, and uh, and then went through your standard, you know, fermentation process. Uh, I actually used the Pico Brew on uh, Pico Firm on this one. So pulling up the you did ferment fermentation chart. It shows that I stayed. Within between seventy one point four and sixty eight degrees, so I actually did a pretty, pretty good, good job for, of for home with no controls. Yeah, and um, when I when I ran this, I used uh, I just did standard fermentation. It's a little little chilly here. I didn't deem it warm enough to do the fast fermentation method. Um, does it does it hurt if you let it ferment for a few extra days? No, I think it's it's probably preferred. Uh, again, another thing we. We had reaffirmed when talking with Mike today. Yep. So, um, and so, so that's that's really it. I then cold crashed it, uh, racked it, and force carbonated it in the in the serving keg. Yep. Uh, and I used the you know the little regulator that uh, regulators mount up, carbonate. Yeah. So, uh, and we, it came out really good, better than than most I've seen so far. Although I have to say. While this was good, I'm very interested in checking out the taproom system yeah. that actually makes these serving kegs a viable serving platform. Yeah. Well, the, the thing about that is you do the natural carbonation, um, and then you can come back and use the the CO2 as your method of serving. Yep. Um, and then I think it'll also impart a little bit extra of that you know, CO2 uh, during the serving cycle. So... Pardon me. I don't know what a serving cycle is, but it sounds good. Right? It sounds great. Yeah. I'd I'd love to have one right now. So uh, if we're if we're gonna try this beer and tell people what we think, we should do that. We should try it. All right. So we've got uh, we've talked colors. We got twelve serms. Sure. Um, we've got some nice head. Uh, although it's it's pretty much uh, gone down to just a nice layer on top, which is exactly what we want to hold yeah. in our carbonation. Should we give it a uh, an aroma test? Yep. Mm, I'm still recovering from that Northwest cold. Thanks for your patience from the last episode when I could barely talk and breathe. Well, I have now contracted it. You're welcome. You were coughing all over me during that last I just, one. I just pinned you to the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take this. Oh. It's my superpower if I'm ever going to be an evil villain. I, I get, yeah, I get so light hops on the nose. Yeah, I don't get a ton of nose. I do get some malt. What What kind of hop are you getting? 
act like I know what kind of hop I'm getting. I'm getting the hoppy kind. <laughs> it's uh is it crisp? <laughs> It's not it's not crisp and bright. It's a little bit more on the the dank side. Not a bad dank though, not not a bad dank. N- not not a bad dank. Definitely getting that malt. Mhm. So, mouthfeel. How's it feel in your mouth? <laughs> Feels like beer in my mouth. Um which is so you're, much you're better doing than it, you're last, doing it right <laughs> than last week's. <laughs> That was like vomit. Oh, the ghost. If you have not seen a video of Jeremy trying a ghost, oh my gosh. It just about made ghosts come out my nose. I was It was bad. So um, I found out what beer style I would have to acquire a taste for, for sure. Um, not sure I'm up for that challenge. Uh, but I would say the... the Is it f- the one that tastes like vomit? Yeah. I, I'm not, it's in my... Yeah. Somebody <laughs> Don't else Don't make me remember. <laughs> I'm blocking that out. I, I, so we're looking at this new handy dandy flavor beer flavor map that we received from Mike Brennan, uh, and it um, it's got some descriptors that we're gonna use. Yeah, great um, descriptors. We're we're looking at this for the first time, so we're gonna do our best. But I would say yep. that there's definitely some cereal. Um, mm. Probably, I you know I'm I, with you on the cereal too. I think it's that malt falls into that cereal uh, category. Yeah, um, almost a toast. Um, but a very light, maybe unbuttered, unbuttered toast. Sure, I can kind of pick up on that on the aftertaste a little bit of that unbuttered popcorn. You yeah, know, just just exactly. uh, just kind of that dry, um, and maybe a little roasted cereal. I mean, I have roasted cereal almost every day, and this definitely has similar flavor profiles. <laughs> also known as like oatmeal. I don't know. No, I have no idea what roasted cereal tastes I don't like either. <laughs> but it sure sounds like this is what it tastes like. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't get a lot of alcoholic notes on this. Um, no. I would say no. The only other one that that uh, that we would see on there is maybe nutty. You get nut. What kind of uh? What kind of nut? <laughs> maybe a little walnut. You get some. See, I wouldn't know what nuts taste like, so right. I wouldn't know. <laughs> You've never. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um all right well you'll have to describe to me what nuts taste like later <laughs> i'll let you find out for yourself <laughs> oh, that's gonna hurt <laughs> all right moving on um should we get into uh so we've covered aroma appearance mouthfeel um taste what about just general how do you like it i like it i I like it a lot. I think I would, <laughs> I would, I will definitely be ordering this one again. Um, the thing I'm most appreciative is there's like, there's no off flavors in it. Uh, it feels nice and smooth and consistent um, all the way through the, you know, through the glass. Yep. And it's a good session beer. I mean, yeah. this is something you could, you could, you know, if you're playing video games with your buds all night or, uh, you know, just hanging As out. As we are want to do. In fact, tonight, uh, I think we're going to be kicking it, uh, kicking up to maybe one of these. I might have to grab a couple more. I can put them in, uh, I got a whole bunch of growlers right over there. Fantastic. So, um, yeah. So I really like this on the, on the star rating scale. I think it, it gets about a, it's about a, you know, a four from me. Yeah, I think it's sitting around a four for me too. Um, it's good. I'm really looking forward to trying these other two reds we've got yeah. coming. Um, because again, I've only got one thing to really compare it to, and that's kind of fixed in my mind. Um, and I might even get some of that from the store to try up against uh, the reds that uh, we are both going to brew. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that'd be excellent. In fact, I might go see if I can find some of this one in the store and see how close we got. Yeah. It is delicious, though. So, uh, last question what video game are you going to, goes best with this? Uh, I think this is a good. Uh... Is this a driving game kind of? beer is it a shooting people kind of beer i think tonight it's going to be a good uh grand theft auto type of beer Um, it could be it could be a good uh heisting beer good heisting beer i agree with you good heisting beer so uh that's today's episode on that note but before we leave where can they find us oh you can find us at picodudes.com oh i like that place facebook oh it's even better instagram soon to be spotify holy moly 
Stitcher. What? Google Play. No. And then, I don't know, maybe YouTube coming up. Don't forget iTunes. Did I not say iTunes? I don't think you That's did. That's usually like the first thing I say because iTunes. iTunes. Excellent. And on that note, Pico Dudes, out. out.